Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about geometric concepts of points, lines, segments, rays, and planes. These geometric objects were defined by Euclid. Point, for example, he defined to be a position in space that has no magnitude and no size. In order to draw a picture of it, we make a dot, which obviously has some size, but in reality it's just indicating where the point is located in space. The point is considered to be zero-dimensional. A line, on the other hand, while it has no thickness and no width, extends indefinitely in two directions. We draw it with arrows at each end in order to indicate that it continues forever, and it's considered to be one-dimensional. Again, it's a little deceptive because when we draw it, it appears to have a width, but in reality, it only has a length. Plane is a flat surface, like a tabletop, that extends infinitely in all directions. We usually draw it to look angled to imply that it continues forever. This is a two-dimensional object. Unlike a tabletop, it doesn't have any thickness. In this diagram, we see points, a line, and a plane. A capital letter usually represents a point, so you see that the points on this diagram have been labeled with the capital letters A, D, E, and F. A line can be named by two capital letters representing any two points that are on the line. For example, the line here could be called D, E, the little symbol of a line over the top of it. Or you can also name the line using a single letter usually a cursive lowercase letter, like here we have the letter L. A plane can be named using any three capital letters representing points that lie in the plane. For example, I could call this blue plane on the diagram here, plane ADE. There is a restriction that you can't use three points from the same line. I wouldn't want to call the plane DEF because those three points could lie in a variety of different planes intersecting at that line. However, I could call it ADF, EFA, any combinations of three points that are not on the same line. Or to make it simpler, I could give it its own name. We often use the Greek alphabet to do that. For example, here I've labeled the plane alpha. Some other geometric objects that we will be discussing are portions of lines. For example, if you take the line through DEF and you remove the point E, you form two of what are called half lines. The half line starting at E and going to the right is called EF. The half line starting at E and going to the left is called ED. Notice that to indicate this, we have a little open dot at the beginning of the symbol above the two letters, rather than having an arrow at the beginning of the symbol, which would have indicated a full line. Array is a half line where you actually include that initial point. So for example, the ray DE includes the end point D, but also all of the other points in the direction of E. A line segment includes two end points. For example, we can see the line segment DE in the center of the line DE. When you're indicating a line segment, you can either just put a little dash above the two letters or you can put the little dots up there at the ends to show the endpoints. So we've looked at a variety of geometric shapes and we need to be able to look at the shape and call it by name. So you need to know the way that we symbolize those objects. In this list of lines, half lines, rays, and segments, you'll observe that in the case of lines and segments, the order in which we list the points doesn't matter. So for example, with a line, if you have the line going through the two points AB, you could name it line AB or line BA. Either way, we're describing the entire line. Same thing with a segment. With a segment, you have to name the two points at the ends or end points, but it doesn't matter in which order. To say segment AB is the same as saying segment BA. This is not the case for half lines and rays. For half lines and rays, the first letter you list has to be the end that doesn't have an arrow, the one where the uh, ray or half line ends. So for example, to say half line AB is different than to say half 
half line BA. When we're discussing planes, it's possible for planes to be parallel, which means that they never meet, or for them to intersect. When two planes intersect, they intersect at a line. We can also talk about parallel lines. Parallel lines lie in the same plane, but never meet. If you have two lines that lie in the same plane but are not parallel, they must meet at exactly one point. These are called intersecting lines. There's also another category of lines which do not lie in the same plane and do not meet. They're called skew lines. The interesting thing about skew lines is that they're neither parallel nor intersecting. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That will help other students to find the video.